Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Smells Like Teen Angst. We are here to talk about Cruel Summer, Season 2, Episode 7. It's the end of the world. <laughs> Hello, as always, I'm Sarah, and I am here with my wild cohorts. Introduce yourself, lady. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jordan, the wild cohort. <laughs> As always. And I'm Kiki. I'm not <laughs> wild at all. I am yeah. literally a grandmother. I made those. <laughs> <laughs> I made those. Sure. Um, so we are here to talk about episode seven. This, I'm pretty sure, is the pre-finale. It has to be with the way this all went down. No, no. I don't. I know. No, we have three episodes left. <laughs> That's what you say. I don't I still know. Need to Google it. I haven't done it. That's what the Wikipedia says. The Wikipedia says we have three episodes left, and I'm super into it. I don't know how they're going to strip them out, but listen to the titles of the next three episodes: "Confess Your Sins," "The Miseducation of Luke Chambers," and "In Game." I don't I'm know what they're going to do in these last three episodes, but it's. It's going to be good. I know. Before, please give them to us. Do not make me watch this on Monday night at 10 o'clock. Um, even though maybe we will. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, but before we... I also just noticed that for some reason our names are popping up on the video. I'm sure I messed with the settings somewhere. It's fine. At, at this point, you know who we are. You know who we are. Good luck. Um, I want to dive into a couple of comments that we received last week. We got some long, good comments last week. Thanks, guys. We did. And Kiki, you were very missed if you didn't know that. <laughs> you I were know. so missed. Everyone kept saying, where's Kiki? I miss Kiki. And I'm like, look, this girl had a problem. I know. Funny. I had no voice. Even now, it's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little weird, but it's there. So this is from Chanel Amber, whoop, whoop, who also said... Kiki, we've missed you. Um, she's been uh, a ride or die since day one. Hi, ladies. I think next week for the Y2K party, Megan and Isabella argue about Megan thinking Isabella kissed Luke. I think that the graze from when Luke gets shot is actually from Ned's gun. And I'm not sure how Luke drowned yet. Uh, and I'm loving the weekly after show as always. I miss Kiki this week. Look forward to next week. So I'm just going to read all your loves, Kiki. <laughs> My God, love letters. Bring it on. <laughs> I know. I wore my heart um, out just for you guys. So you know, I love you too. <laughs> um, Sin Kizzle's got a good one. Um, she's. I feel like after watching this episode, she's right, almost right on the money. Uh, my current theory is that Megan and Isabella fight about the kiss, but Megan overhears Luke bragging to those guys from the beach and realizes the truth. So she and Isabella get Luke to the cabin, drug him, maybe try and film him because I think he made the tape. I agree with you. Uh, maybe shoot to scare him, but accidentally graze his ear. They both they the booth. They both leave him there the next morning. Hence, Megan thinking that Isabella went back to the cabin, and how Luke drowns has nothing to do with either of them. And I think that's so far so so good. After watching this episode, yeah, no, I I read that comment this afternoon, and I was like, I think she's probably on the money. Yeah. And we were all kind of leaning that way. It's like all like mishaps, right? All the random mishaps with the drugs in his body. Maybe yeah. it's how they get him there. He wakes up tied up, you know? So like. Yeah. For me, definitely. I'm like, I feel like it was a karma situation. And um, I don't really think any soul one person is responsible for this death. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting to see how the pieces fall. Yeah. Because, like, as far as the drugs go, like, the ear graze makes sense with a gun, but him being missing for six months and drugs still being in his system doesn't make sense unless he had recently ran away, broke out, in case Ned has him kidnapped somewhere. Anyway, in the bunker. Out. In and the Ned, bunker. Ned does not, have a bunker. Yeah, it's locked up. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way um, to tell us about that bunker and we're not going to see it again. No, it's too important. They couldn't have like not done that at all. Um, so that's, there's one more. Uh, 
Yeah, and other people, like Stronger Army is like, obvious, Megan gaslit Jeff something terrible, and I wonder if that little bunker has a bigger role. It's like, absolutely, it has to. There's no way that they're going to just set up Ned and his Y2K worry and the house getting locked down. We got some good theories. We got some good thoughts. So, um, just so y'all know, we're going to, normally we do, you know, in chronological order, summer, winter, summer. But for this one, they decided to do the cliffhanger on winter. So I'm going to go summer, summer, winter. Are we yeah. on the same page? Yeah. No, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Can I just say before we get into it that this episode, we've been talking about how good the music is all season long. Like, And we even said that for last season, too. The musical cues have been great. I honestly, they're so good. I want them to do a season set in the 70s. That's just my personal ask. Uh, Cruel Summer Season 3, Listen to Me Freeform, set in the 70s. Um, but... They used two of my favorite 90s songs this episode, TLC Creep and um, Colorblind by those guys. You know the guys. Mm -hmm. The guy dated Rachel and Rachel ready. and friends. I am ready. Yeah. ready. Yeah. Those are two um, of my favorite songs of all time. Good job. Crows. Good job. Yeah. Counting Crows. Great. There we go. The Counting Crows. Crows. I was like, like it's the Cruel Intentions song. song. Cruel Summer. Cruel Intentions. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this was perfect. Um, so let's start with summer of 1999 that opens with one of Jordan's favorite 90s songs, TLC's Creep. It's the day after the birthday party. Megan is mortified that her plans did not go as she wanted. And she thinks it's a sign that they shouldn't be together. And Isabel is like, girl, no, the universe is going to give you a do over. Don't even worry about it. And I'm like, yeah, that's good girlfriend. That's what you do. You hype them up. It's like, it's fine. You guys were drunk. It's you. It's cool. It's all good. He had to throw up. You did better, better out there than on you. Yeah. Um. So while Megan better and Isabel, baby, are better out than in. Exactly. So then, while Megan and Isabel are cleaning up, of course, Luke shows up. To and I just love that Isabel is like, cool to help. Great, and like makes him because he was literally just gonna come talk to Megan and not <laughs> help at all. You could just tell by the way he rolled up. That was so a very kinky move. <laughs> what? Giving someone a task? <laughs> yes. You gonna, if you're going to exist, you're going to clean, okay? <laughs> exactly. This is everybody's party. <laughs> and this was his party. You're going to just show up and not help? <laughs> exactly. Happy birthday. Pick up a trash bag. Yeah. And that house was wrecked like exactly. the fact that her mom let her leave it like that without even going to bed i was like okay mom i don't thank I you know, that was mom. one of the things that i was thinking like her mom came home and saw that house and was like okay cool go to bed yeah there's no way there's no my way my mom would be like your drunk ass is gonna help me clean this house let's go you throw up you're gonna right. clean that up too <laughs> like yeah my mom is cool but my mom's <laughs> not that cool yeah. No, my mom was um, like, you know what? Here's a hangover. Cleaning up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so after they finish cleaning, Isabella pushes Megan and Luke to leave and head to the cabin so they can have some, because she knows what happens in the cabin, um, to have some alone time. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, at the cabin. Is that what my life is missing? Cabin? Said it, said it again? <laughs> I said, is that what my life is missing? A cabin? Girl, right? Maybe that's what we need to do. Um, so while they're at the cabin, there is a ton of flirty tension. They talk about never hanging out alone anymore because Isabella was here. And they are going through all these old things. Like, I don't really understand. I guess a storm is coming and he's wanting to lock down the cabin and make sure they have flashlights and do all this stuff for his dad. And I'm like, is this stuff not just ready to go? Yeah, I was a little confused on that aspect too. But then I was also like, I don't live in a place where things like that would have to be done. And I never have. So my capacity is like, oh, yeah, make sure there's flash like batteries in the flashlight and that the windows are boarded. Yeah. Um, but they're also like, but also, are you staying at that house? So why does it matter? My only capacity for understanding things like that is like an earthquake kit, but that right. always has to be ready in California because you don't know when the earthquake is coming. So you check it like every six months and you're like, oh, okay, cool. The batteries work. The space blanket is in there. You know, we're good. Yeah. 
It's yeah. got some drugs in it. Uh, it's got water for a week for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Like I always TV. get in for drinking the water out of the earthquake kit. You have to, because it goes oh, bad. Oh, I'm guilty of eating the earthquake kit snacks. I am so guilty of that. Like if it's, if I'm out of gushers and I'm like, you know what does have gushers in it? The earthquake kit. The earthquake kit. <laughs> Um, but they also, there's like so many hints in this scene that are, I think are going to come into play later. The flashlights for one, the giant rope that is used to tie up the boat. Why the boat's not already tied up, I don't understand. Um, you know, the walkie talkies that they find. Um, I'm like, oh, what are those about? Like, there's no way. There's a lot of big, big, big things. Um, and then... This part threw me, like, threw me. I'm like, why is this story happening? Why are we bringing Brent back up? And Luke talks about how he was always scared while walking through the woods and how Megan always found him. I'm like, oh, that's cute. And then they talk about this where she and Brent pranked him by putting a walkie-talkie under his bed, making him think it was aliens, adding more to this Brent and Megan storyline of their friendship, which we will continue to see throughout this entire episode. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that was like the first initial thing that planted that seed that maybe Brent and Megan might have a past or, you know, might be related in some way differently than just like her relationship to Luke. Because now it's very evident that, hey, we are all best friends. We all grew up together. Mm hmm. And that's, like I wish they'd planted these seeds earlier because Brent has been just such a pain in the ass every single episode that we basically have written him off as a character, written him off as having relationships with people. And you come back around and you realize like, no, they did all grow up together. They were friendly. They hung out. Like they have sure. a relationship and they do care for each other. So I wish that like he had just been a little less snide every episode. Like he could still be an a-hole, but just be a little less snide. See, I'm like, they gave us these crumbs at the very end because if they gave us anything, well, we would all dislike him so much anyway that we would have just pinned it on him to begin with. Like Luke, de Luke's death, like maybe Brent accidentally did it. Yeah, like maybe a brother squab, you know? I mean, yeah. I'm still not, I still <laughs> think that could be a possibility because he was acting real guilty at certain parts during this episode, but we'll get there. Yeah. Uh, so after the story, Megan and Luke go on their twilight run through the woods. <laughs> Which it was very <laughs> twilight. Oh my god! I was like, "This is I just." I thought I was the only Indiana. person who was thinking that. I no. thought you could outrun me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking like when Bella first becomes a vampire and they like go hunting and you know oh. that's, that's the vibe I was getting. Their little slow mo frolic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was just like, "This is hilarious." Um, so while they're in the woods, eventually they get separated and Megan thinks that she's on Ned's land. Luke's like, be careful. But it turns out Luke is on Ned's land. And he, that moment when he like walks into Ned, I was terrified for him because he looked like he was not friendly looking, but then offered to help him with his walkie talkie because the frequency was bad. And Luke's, like, not answering Megan, so she thinks he's been killed by a mountain lion or something. And I'm just, you know, making things Twilight. Up. Twilight. And then he Twilight. fixes it, and he's, and Ned's just like, stay on your side of the line. But then Luke never tells Megan was, that he ran into him. That part was filmed so well because Ned was so imposing and, like, it really reminded me yes. of those people. Like, I know we've all met that kind of person who was so intimidating and they're just like, oh yeah, the nearest payphone is over there and like help you with whatever it is that you need. And you're like, you're the scariest son bitch I've ever met in my life. And yet so nice to me. I don't understand. You know, we have a good friend and um, if you, if I did not know him, like, and the person he was with all his tattoos and his, his beard and his grumpy face half the time, I'd be like, this man is scary. <laughs> but, when you, but when you meet him and know him, you're like, he's a giant child. He is a toddler teddy bear. 
and I love him. Oh, so I was convinced much. he didn't like me up until like last week, and then he started following me on Instagram, and I was like, oh, we are friends. Oh, because <laughs> he just he just looks like he'd be a bad man. Like, he, and then you you get to know him, and you're like, he's what are you talking about? He's just a little teddy bear. And you're a teddy bear. He's just a little guy. He's a little guy. He's, he's a little guy in a big body. That's and that's it. what Megan's like. Ned's just a little guy. He's a little guy. He's fine. So also, Megan, during this walkie-talkie talk, lets Luke know that she and Jeff broke up. So they're both going through breakups right now. And when they finally meet up at the dock, she and Luke hold hands while I Am Ready starts playing by the Counting Crows, the song from Cruel Intention. I am and I am ready. Oh, yeah. um, and Luke brings up remembering how they almost kissed because at this point they have not talked about it. And Megan tries to like excuse it away like she does. And then they make out at the dock with that epic song playing. Which, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I didn't know how this story ends, I would think that's real cute. But considering I know where we are now, it got on my nerves because Luke's a jerk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Luke's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> like, which, what were you, you going to say, Kiki? I was going to say, mm-hmm, which is real disheartening because they gave us none of that. None of that in the beginning. I mm-hmm. really thought Luke was a sweet boy. It happens where you have like the asshole sibling and then like the sweet, good sibling. You yeah. know, I thought it was that type of relationship. Not that they are cut from the mm-hmm. same cloth and they're both the absolute effing worse. Right. Um, cut from the I same know. damn cloth. I'm not rooting for it anymore. I was rooting for it for so long, but things that happened before. Yeah. That happened. I can't like in my mindset. I was like, you know, I really hope that the girls don't have anything to do with his death, but also, you know, that Luke's hands are clean. It was like some type of mistake. It happened and like something malicious killed him, but like those girls still love him very much. Yeah. And then now I'm like, well, you were a dirtbag. <laughs> it reminded me of like, bar- remember Barbarian? Yeah. Justin yes. Long's character. That's what it gave what it gave me. Where the beginning, I was like, he's so cute and fun, Justin Long. And then but you do that big <laughs> bit and you're like, bro. Bro. Well no. now no. I don't care if the goblin gets you. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So now Maybe the titty lady killed Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I won't lose a lung. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Watching Barbarian was a time of my life because I watched it at home with two friends. And when that woman came on screen, my friend Taz immediately screamed out, Oh no, not a tea lady! <laughs> it's so good. It's such a good movie. Uh, I saw it in the theater with an audience of a ton of people. And Everyone was talking to the screen and I felt so validated, but also I was on steroids and drank a bunch of caffeine. So I had to pee literally every 25 minutes. So I kept leaving and coming back in on the most random shit. I was losing my mind. I left and came back and I was like, why is the titty in Justin Long's mouth with the hair and everything? I was like, (laughs) she missed all the important stuff. And talked about what a good time I had watching that movie. So then my mom was like, I want to watch that movie and watched it by herself the next day. I got so many text messages while I was at work. <laughs> You're so funny. I love your mom. She's like, what am yeah, I watching? Sorry. Sorry. No, tangent, straight up, you know my mom is. She's like, what the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, So we are jumping ahead to summer of 2000. So this is the green filter. This is the current timeline. Just so everyone is here with us. Goth Megan. This is Goth Megan. So the lawyer shows up at Megan's house and tells her that they have to go down to the station because she's being charged. But is really vague and doesn't say what she's being charged with. Is it Luke's death? We don't know. Um, Then we see that Steve's PI had caught Megan selling information to interested buyers and that she's working with Ned, the man in the woods. So 
as we know, Ned has been trying to get after Steve for years through like lawsuits and threats. And Steve mentions a scuffle in the parking lot and thinks that maybe Luke bumped into him at the cabin and Ned killed him, which might not be far from it. Cause that's kind of where we've started to lean as well. But now that Steve said it, I feel like we have to be wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Scuffle is also one of those words that just cracks me up all the time. Like it's such an old white person word. Like that's like the equivalent <laughs> of black people saying they was tussling. Like it's just such a weird, like don't say that. Don't say that. <laughs> tussling. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> um, so then at the police station, we learned that they found evidence of fraud on Megan's computer. So that virus did not clean up everything. And they charged her for making those fake IDs that we saw over the summer last year and she starts freaking out because she's going to lose her college scholarship uh, however because she was only 17 it's a misdemeanor and not a felony and she's not going to jail which is better and it's all because she used the watermark that we saw her and jeff do to make them look more legit but lest we forget we do have a conversation with jeff at the end of this section mm-hmm where he basically fesses up to ratting her out. So yeah. her computer did not fail. He yeah, just exactly. Sold her. He just sold her down the river. But what they told her is that they lied to her. her computer. They lied to her to exactly. protect their source. But that's what makes me feel like she's going to be able to get out of it because she's going to be like, prove it. I mean, maybe, unless they have the proof because they have Jeff's ID. Because as you said, when she runs into him at the store... She tells him what's going on, and he's like, oh, I was trying to buy a pack of uh, beer, and I got caught, and it was confiscated. So they have it. And he ratted, and then she just freaked out like that. She proved guilt on her own self. And that's why they lied to her about saying it was on the computer, so that she would confess. Because if they were to just say, we heard from this person, she would would do what you did, Kiki. Prove it. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. So there's no way. I she, do think somehow it's gonna somehow it's gonna come around, and she's not gonna have lost her scholarship eventually. I just think we need to get to that part. Yeah, maybe Isabella's parents are gonna save the day. And do they even exist at this point? You know, yeah. that's what I'm waiting for too. Isabella's to lawyer, Annalise Pope. <laughs> something maybe they'll just pay for her school who knows like anything could happen we like you said we got three more episodes um where am i here i am so then brent comes over to megan's and tells her about the private investigator he also questions her about her association with ned and says that ned stole millions from the last company he worked for and assaulted his boss and put him in the hospital. And Megan's like, I'm sorry, what? Because we did get a little story from Ned when they were in the bunker, being like, this was my IP and I took it. So we knew that. So Ned obviously is going to feel very justified in his actions because the company probably did steal his own invention from him. I don't doubt that. Yeah. Um, And Brent says that he knows that Megan did not kill Luke, but they are going to try and take Ned down like as much as possible like that's what his father's gunning for for obviously now more than one reason he does not care if ned is guilty he just wants ned out of his hair yeah and for some reason i feel like he has some type of vendetta against ned he is a part of the reason ned like is in the situation and space he's in Mm -hmm. um and you know like it happens all the time with tech and money um Someone decides they don't really want their hands dirty and all of a sudden they're deemed as like the crazy person, the rat, but really they're just like, Mm -hmm. let's not do bad things. Yeah. We shouldn't do bad things, guys. Don't do bad things. And then bad things don't happen to you. (laughs) Um, So Megan, of course, now getting this information, heads to Ned's because now she's got to confront Ned about and let him know about being charged with a misdemeanor. And asking him if he can erase the charge. He's like, it's too late. There's already a paper trail. And he's like trying to convince her that it doesn't matter. She doesn't need a degree. And she's like, what the fuck are you even talking about? And then she also talks to him about Steve and the investigation. Because they're convinced. And like Ned flies off the freaking handle. 
And he's like, you can't steal what's yours to begin with. And like storms away, which freaks Megan out. And I'm like, there's the rage, right? That we're all waiting for her to see and for us to see to then continue to point us to Ned. Because so far he's just been like a weirdo with a bunker. And now he's an angry weirdo. Yeah, I just think he's like, he's a weird guy who likes mustard and, you know, probably didn't have a lot of friends growing up. So he doesn't have social cues. Leave that alone. I love that liking mustard makes someone weird. <laughs> no, it was a joke from last week. I didn't week. think those two things were related. <laughs> you got to watch last week's You're episode. Five, without five two. He's got brown eyes. He likes mustard. He's a little weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Ned throws out this weird threat about like if Steve's gonna look into him, then I'm gonna look into Steve. And I was like, okay. Um, but then Megan notices cameras and asks if these cameras have always been in this position. And Ned says yes. So now I'm wondering, are those just gonna be cameras that are gonna show uh, Megan and Isabella dragging Luke to the cabin like what are these cameras going to show are they going to are we going to figure out that luke was still alive there's got to be some sort of information on them that's in oh that's those cameras are either going to show that the girls are innocent or they're going to show that the girls are guilty but somehow those cameras are coming back into play on new year's eve exactly that's where my head went i was like when she noticed the camera she was like this is how everyone's hands get washed clean this is how we figure out what exactly happened yeah which i get it's hard it's the last thing I would think of if someone went missing at a cabin because properties aren't close next to each other. Right. I wouldn't think there's oh, like, yeah, no, I wouldn't be like, Oh yeah, there's surveillance footage. I wouldn't think about that. No, there's not, not some surveillance footage. And also because their fight has always been the property line. So I feel like those cameras point to his property line that the like, chambers believe also belongs to them, you know? Yeah. So it's that weird little gray section over there. Um, so then while Megan's there, Steve shows up to Ned, Ned's house, freaks out, and he's like, sneak out the back because no one can know you're here. And as she's sneaking out, who run, Who does she run into? Brett. Who lets her go? Brett. Brett. Which Brett. is sus because it makes it feel like, you know, Brett knows that, no, she has no involvement. Because <laughs> he's probably involved, you know? Yeah. Well, he already told her. He's like, I know you didn't kill him. But, like, to let her go from there, it just shows that their level of friendship is more than this show has led on for us. And it's kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. <sighs> the baby was Brett's. It was never Luke's to begin with. God. Oh! oh God. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Yeah. I just like stirring the pot. <laughs> yeah. It, you know, at this point, I'll believe anything. Um, yeah. We then, have episodes left and it can't be this clean. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be so messy. So if we learned anything from Cruel Summer from the first season, yeah. <laughs> it's that it's going to be messy. It's going to get messier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to wrap up this section so there's like a, a scream fight between steve and ned and megan's a megan is a child why are you hanging out with a child which we all agree um and like about why he would have killed luke and steve starts threatening him and waiting for ned to screw up and like ned's just standing there with like a gun gonna he's gonna do nothing so i don't understand why he feels like this gun is a threat because there's no way and you know steve even calls it out he's like he's not gonna do shit and he just like walks away I'm like, yeah, because he can't murder Steve Jabers. Like, no. Yeah. You can't, can't just happen. shoot someone, you know. Yeah, he just, just wants to have the thought in the back of Steve's mind that maybe, maybe I would. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then this section ends with Megan getting the call from the college telling her that they have to revoke her scholarship. And it's sad. So and she's the crying. part that I thought was baloney and I was also confused about because it wasn't the college. It was her high school principal who now that Megan has graduated from high school, like the high school and her have nothing to do with each other. Why would the high school inform the college? Like to my knowledge, to my understanding, Megan would have been able to get like at least a little bit through her first semester because think about it, the high school That's doesn't even send official transcripts until like halfway through the first semester. So I'm saying she could have showed up and like everything was fine. And then halfway through the first semester, shit would have hit the fan. Exactly. That's exactly where my mind went. I was like, honestly, she could have already been in school on campus, living her good life, 
before she got caught and would have still been able to pull that whole semester to fight it. Because again, your uh-huh. school does not send that official transcript until you start college. Like, and because some people have to take she summer school. She would have made friends with some professors. <laughs> she would have met up with the Dean of Retention. She would have been able to fight mm-hmm. it. So that part's a little she would have found, me. She would have found that perfect on-campus, like, <laughs> TA job that makes her, like, un, like, unexcusable, like, they need her. And then they're just like, we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I missed that it was the principal. I thought it was someone from, like, student aid or whatever. No, she says on the phone that the sheriff called the principal and the principal called the college, which that, that's the part where I'm, I'm like, that's kind of fucking baloney, man. Yeah. 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 Well, we know the principal has it out for her in general for some reason because the principal is the one who threatens True. suspension on the poor girl. Sex tape. Yeah. I'm like, who's this principal? Let me see them because we're going to fight. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> let's get, catch my hand. So let's go into winter of 1999, which is the, the moments we have been waiting for this whole season. This is the lead up. This is the night that it all goes down, the night of Luke's disappearance, possible death. Um, So it is New Year's Eve. Um, Megan, if you remember from last week, that Luke told Megan that Isabella kissed him, and it's a real big thing. And so Megan tries to see what Isabel has to say about the plunge. And Isabella's like, yeah, it was fine, and doesn't tell her about Luke, which Jordan, you and I talked about this last week, that... I didn't, we never thought Isabel would ever say anything about Luke. I, that was one of those things you were, she was just going to take to the grave, let it not be a thing. It was a mistake. Why, why rock the boat? And that seems to be exactly what she Which did. Which was I like exactly that. her plan. Yeah, exactly her plan. And, you know, they're talking New Year's resolutions and Isabel's like, I'm going to start fresh. And Megan's all catty like, oh, yeah, because you do like it messy, don't you? And I was like, bitch. Bitch, calm down. It was so out of pocket. Um, so then we have this cute scene where Megan and Luke are shopping at like Party City or something. And Megan uh, asks Luke, I guess not cute, it's not the right word, but asks Luke what she he thinks Isabella's motives are for kissing for kissing him. And his answer is garbage. He's like, Oh, well, you know that she's always jealous. She tries to control you. I think it's so that she could break us up and that way she'd have you all to herself again. And this was honestly his downfall because she's like, that doesn't make any sense because she pushed us together. I know. Like he could have come to me. Go for it. Go Go ahead, Kiki. I said he could have come clean at this point. Thank you. Thank you. He could have come to me and like it was the most like I have been in relationship with guys who make up these dumb lies this way. Like it's the most boy brained lie. It's unnecessary. Go yeah. What were you gonna say? Because that was so funny. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I said it. I was like, he was given the opportunity to come clean. Like, this was the moment he could have saved his life. If this, if Megan is responsible for, you know, (laughs) murdering this man, I'm just saying, you know, he, anything that was brought upon him, he was given the out. And, you know, women, we give, we always give you an opportunity. We always give you an opportunity to come clean. Mm -hmm. So now, whatever happens to Luke from here, He's made his own bed. Now he has to lie in it. It's really mm-hmm. sad. Like, I'm just... Sorry, bro. Yeah. And I'm I just like... Say, one thing that bothered me about this scene is that all of us were alive for Y2K and that New Year's Eve. If they had gone out shopping that day, they would not have found anything. The shelves would have no. been bare. People were planning that New Year's Eve party for the whole year. It was absurd. Everybody bought all the stuff, all those dumb 2000s glasses. Like, the shit would have been gone. Gone. I'm just going to chalk it up to small town. You know, small town. (laughs) Because the small town things were left. I'm like, you couldn't even buy water. Like, come on. People were simultaneously oh, planning for the end of the world whilst trying to throw the best party of their lives. Yeah. So. 
yeah, it was a th- wild. Uh, so speaking of wild, this is when we get the scuffle that Steve Chambers mentioned uh, the the about with Ned and <laughs> the scuffle. He, but first, like basically, Ned comes in hot because he sees Megan buying all this two Y two K stuff, and he's like, "I've told you this wasn't a joke," and he's like shaking her like a child, and like Luke like rolled up. You know what I mean? I was actually a little proud of him. That little man just like rolled up and was like, bro, don't touch my woman. And they, like, they get into like a little fight. And of course, Ned's going to throw him across the parking lot. But I I was like, okay, it's not redeemable because I still don't love the boy for right now. But I was like, okay, so now we get the, the kerfuffle. Now we know <laughs> kerfuffle. And now we know what this little fight was about. And it's not enough to want to murder Luke Chambers. No, it was more absolutely like, not. Yeah. And even if you were to look at it, like you could see if they were to like get security footage, you would see what the fight was really about. That he came for Megan and Luke like took up for her. So it's like this doesn't follow your narrative that you want. But then they do have Ned throw out this like random threat again. Ned likes to throw out these veiled threats of like party real hard because it might be your last and I'm like, okay, now we're pushing really hard for this Ned storyline. And now I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> Ned reminds me of the guy in a disaster movie who knows that it's the end of the world, but nobody believes him. <laughs> like, that's the territory that he got to in this episode. Between him, like, sneaking up on the kids in the woods and the it might be your last party. He's the weird scientist in the movie who's like, no, the aliens are real. And, like, nobody fucking believes him. <laughs> Um, I was going to say um, The Last of Us, if any of you guys watched it, the episode with Ron Swanson, he's the Ron Swanson, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. He's been planning for this his whole life. You know, he doesn't like people and this is just what it is. And he feels some type of like a Ken, AKA like protection towards her. And it's rearing its head in an ugly way at this moment. Yeah. And it's just so many. Yeah. It's, it's a messed up relationship to begin with. Like this whole mentor relationship she has is already kind of kooky, yeah. you know, inappropriate. It's not like he's a teacher. He's just like some random guy on the internet. Yeah. But again, I still don't have any reason to think that he would hurt her no. he had her in that bunker and he let her walk out of it you know she knew the code she knew <laughs> she boop 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 pound <laughs> like she knows <laughs> um so they're all planning this new year's eve party and of course nothing's going to plan and he's gonna tr- luke is gonna try and like get the empty cannery warehouse which i'm gonna say later they decorate so quickly fyi so for such a big space so Luke goes to see, you know, Luke goes to see his dad because that's apparently where the keys are. But of course, all that happens is Steve berating Luke about the, the fight in the parking lot, brings up again how he has to be smarter with his actions because family consequences. And a lot of this storyline, because they're pushing so hard for Ned right now, it almost makes me feel like after the girls do whatever it is that they're, they do or don't do that we learn in this episode, and then not feeling enough from his dad, I almost feel like Luke is going to unalive himself. That's why I made that face, because I had an epiphany, and I think that we're going to... There's like time that's missing that we as the audience don't know about yet. And you have to think about it. He stole the keys to the cannery. They make a big deal about him stealing the keys to the cannery. Brett helps him. And he's like, hey, don't say anything to dad and don't get caught and blah, blah, blah. And I feel like clearly, because and we also know that Luke, quote unquote, ran away. So I feel like at some point, his dad's going to find out he saw the keys to the cannery. He's going to flip out. It's going to make Luke feel so bad that he's going to run away. And then God knows what happens. Yeah. <laughs> as interested as I am in this whole situation of this episode, I'm still on the fence because I feel like all this information was introduced to us so late in the game that I still can't point fingers this way. Sure. So. Sure. Yeah. 
there's just a lot of new information that's making me have like little moments of like maybe this maybe that like i never thought before that luke at least i don't remember that luke you know hurt himself we did think it was an accident and a series of unfortunate events <laughs> i think luke what like i think because you know luke was going to run away mm-hmm like we know from Megan, I think that Luke like maybe felt some like family pressures or something, you know, maybe he didn't want the life that was planned for him mm-hmm. type of situation. But I don't necessarily think that means he unalived himself. Yeah. I think something happened that was maybe a mistake of chance. Yeah. I don't know. None of us know. Of None course. Know. We're all yeah, three more episodes to go. <laughs> There's still a little bit to go, but again, Everybody in this episode was introduced so late into in the game that I'm just like, obviously not. <laughs> That's how I'm feeling about Ned now, but who knows? <laughs> um, and like Brent, even like there's so many of those like one liners of like Brent's like, don't get caught or I'll throw you under the bus, you know, because he helps him get the keys. Um, this is also the moment where we see Megan do the pregnancy test and Megan is pregnant. Uh, we don't have to see Isabella walk into the bathroom and see the results. We already know that's what happens. And so you can see it on Isabella at the party that she knows something she shouldn't know. And she's hoping Megan will tell her. And she doesn't. Um, but before we get into that, I, this Y2K party I thought was so Y2K. I love like, what are you going to do if it's your last day on earth? Like Jeff's like camera interviews. I also feel like that camera is going to have something important on it and we're going to find it later. Cause otherwise why I know it's his thing, but like it is very, it is his thing and they keep showing it. Um, uh-huh. I love the decorations. I loved everybody's yeah. outfits. Parker was back at this party and I feel like Parker's got to come back into play again, more so than just knowing that she's the sheriff's daughter. Like, there's a lot of things that they have been seeding. And then we probably do have three more episodes worth of information now that we're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Isabella and Megan finally chat at this party. And Isabella is like trying to get out of her because she's like, oh, are you not drinking? And Megan's like, oh, I already had like six. And she's like, bitch, don't lie to me. Um, and Megan does the whole, is there something you want to tell me? Like a mom, you know, like. You come home from school and you're in trouble. Is there anything you want to say? Uh-huh. Um, and I'm so glad that she had we had this confrontation sooner rather than li- later. Because Megan is confused. She's pissed at her friend for kissing her boyfriend. But it also makes no sense. What Luke is saying doesn't, like, add up. And so Isabella's like, when Megan says, like, oh, oh Luke said you kissed him. She's like, oh, no, hold up. No, he kissed me. And Megan's like, well, why didn't you tell me? And it's exactly what we thought. She's like, it was a mistake. I wasn't going to say anything because it didn't matter. I didn't want to rock the boat. And Isabella calls out Megan because she's like, well, would you have believed me anyway? Like, what are you even talking about? And she's like, you won't ever give me the benefit of the doubt. And Megan's like, you're right. And then she storms off to go confront Luke. And that's where she sees Luke, like our commenter viewer said, bragging about having both these girls and you know, balancing both these girls, juggling them out. And Megan overhears it, is so upset, runs back in, eventually finds Isabella and is like, you're right. He's a piece of shit. He said these things. I'm so pissed. And now I want to like take it out on him. And we don't like, I, we don't know what that means. We don't know what that's going to entail, but we now know that there is a plot and a plan between these two girls to get revenge on Luke which I'm here for. (laughs) Yeah. And here's the thing. I wrapped it in my head of like, what could happen that would make the revenge worth it? Why the cabin? Like why the location, everything. And part of me feels like they'd involve more people in it than just themselves. Right. Like maybe maybe they're going to film it. Maybe they're going to embarrass him in front of his homies. Like my heart still isn't. That makes the problem. My mental state is still trying to force me into this, like, well, if I was this age, what would I have done? And how would I have reacted? And murder would not be my first go-to, you know? Uh, no. No. Murder would be embarrassing. 30-year-old me is like, play with fire, get burned. <laughs> but, 
But 18-year-old me is not going to go to felony, to yeah. committing a felony. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, going to like shave his head and pant in front of his, in front of his friends. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to like record it for the world to see. Exactly. And play it at your dad's next Christmas party. Like, I'm going <laughs> to leave you in the middle of the woods for someone to find you butt naked tomorrow. Like, tie you to a tree, cover you in honey. And talk about your face. Yeah. yeah. Like something, I like the idea of the camera. Cause like Megan does run into Jeff and he's like, what's your resolution? And she's like, to take control of my life. Who like that man probably follows them. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like creepily. I don't know why he would, but somehow probably does make it to the cabin. He's got to be involved cabin, still. I think the cabin makes sense. It's a very um, central spot for them. It's a spot that means the most to them. It's probably where they hook up the most. I doubt they're having sex at each other's houses. They go to the cabin. I feel like that's the, the hangout hook up, hook up spot. So when she goes up to him and is like, let's get out of here. Let's go to the cabin. He's like, oh, I know what that means. Mm -hmm. Here's but the thing, though. Because the cabin is a place that they hang out at and Luke already took it like into his own hands to find a whole new venue for this party, like the cannery, because um, you wanted something bigger and not the cabin. For me, it feels like the cabin is going to always be the spot of the after party because that's what it would have been in my situation. So it feels like mm -hmm. everybody in the friend group would have somehow ended up at that cabin with their cohorts at, the, at some point in time that night. Yeah, And, you know, Megan could just waltz around the party and being like, after party at the cabin, after party at the cabin, and then embarrass Luke there. Like, yeah. that seems more teenage logical to me than murder. Right. <laughs> murder. I like that after party idea because... Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but the stories from everyone is like, there, there's two. There's Megan and Luke were fighting, and there's Megan and Luke were fine and left together. So there could very well be two different party locations, two very different endings to the night. If they're And the after party there would make perfect sense, because what if they set up something embarrassing for some people to come to and see, and then they get in a huge fight and leave together? Yes. So it's like, you know, that inner circle knows that things were bad. Mm -hmm. The people who were just all invited to this giant Y2K party were like, they were fine. They left together. Like, that's all I know. Yeah. Because didn't someone say they were fighting and left? Someone said yes. that. Yes. So, yeah. Know. It's very likely that there were two different parties. And the cops don't yeah. know it yet, but we do. But we do because we're smart. Because <laughs> we can think like teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> But it makes it, I didn't even think of an after party, but that makes perfect sense. And you would not invite everyone because why would no. you do that? That seems crazy. Exactly. I'm not sharing yeah. my liquor with you. Do you know how hard this was to come by mm -hmm. at 18 years old? Yeah. Get out of here. Because we don't even see them leave at this. It's literally just like that 10 second countdown, Megan giving Luke the death stare and then saying we should go back to the cabin. She does mm -hmm. say just the two of them, but who knows if it ends up being just the two of them? Probably not. I know, but she also could have been walking. Like, this is point. It's just, the, it's just the two of them. That's what he thinks. Yeah. This predates everyone having a cell phone, okay? Like, well, yeah. I didn't even get my cell phone to, what, like 2004? <laughs> five, and I was lucky at that point. Yeah. So, no one has a cell phone to, like, snitch on each other. It's just not as unheard of. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's how this episode ended. Was her just like, oh, because he had a pager. Yeah, he has a pager. He has a pager. And I was like, oh my God, I haven't seen one of those since like, <laughs> like I was a baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know. My mom, had a <laughs> my mom had a pager too. And then she'd my be like, don't too. page me 911 if it's not 911. Because usually it would just be like, can I have a pack of gushers? Uh -huh. <laughs> Just yeah. <laughs> Go to the earthquake kit. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's how this episode ends. I was so mad. I was like, well, I need an and this was me now. I was Kiki. One more. But we don't have one more. They haven't sent them to us. We don't have one more. I, I do. My final note I want to say is uh, empathy for homeboy who was like, he's he got so real during his video and was like, I'm afraid of the robot revolution. 
<laughs> I'm like, we've seen that movie, bro. We had that movie. I get it. <laughs> when yeah, he's so that, that guy is alive in 2023 and he's posting on Reddit about how the robot revolution is coming. He is still scared of it to this day. A girl, there's a reason I fought Sarah so hard on having an Alexa and a Roomba in the house. Because I'm like, why are we going to add more <laughs> robots for the revolution? They'll be in our house to oh, just take I, us. <laughs> I'd be saying please and thank you to Siri all the time because the robots are going to kill me. I'm going to yeah. be in the house with the robots. That's what, okay. when, she, when she calls the Alexa a bitch, I say don't do that. Well, she should listen sometimes. <laughs> like, she, gets in my business. Your life. she gets in my business and that's what I don't like. Okay. I'm trying to save your life. Be nice to her. She just butts into my conversation and I'm like, no one was even talking to you. <laughs> this is the A and B conversation. See your way out of it. <laughs> well, Speaking of C, Cruel Summer, um, any other final thoughts before we get out of here for this episode? No? no. Nailed it. Good job, ladies. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess we will see you all next time. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, thumbs up, ring the bell. You know all the things. Uh, comment all your thoughts because we love it and we read as many as we can because uh, we try not to make these too long for all of you. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. See you next week. Bye. Bye.